welcome back to the channel Unify Learning and today we will continue with class 12 chapter 2 self and personality. In the previous video I have talked about concept of self. Let's continue with cognitive and behavioral aspects of self. Start with self concept. The way we perceive ourselves and the ideas we hold about our, about our competencies and attributes is self concept. Uh, let me give you an example. For example, you are able to solve numericals in physics and able to do chemical equations. You are good at uh, doing experiments in chemistry lab. That is your positive self-concept. But when you are not able to do good in athletics, that is your negative self-concept. We can know about the self-concept of a person by asking about himself or herself. Let's talk about self-esteem. Self-esteem is how is as a person we always judge ourselves. How much we are worthy. What's the value of ourselves? That is self-esteem. It can be high self-esteem or low self-esteem. We can assess self-esteem by psychometric test. In these tests, there are some statements and you have to mark that how much it is true to yourself. So, for example, let us assume that there are some statements like I am mostly liked by my teachers. My parents always appreciate me. I'm, I'm always good at completing my homework. If the child marks these statements as true, then means that the child has high self-esteem as in comparison to the child who marks no to that statement. This is to be noted that by the age of 6 or 7 years, the child develops his self-confidence in the four areas. Social competence, academic competence, physical or athletic competence or physical appearance that refines with the age. But how you will understand this in general terms, I will tell you that, that for example, self-esteem is the capacity to view oneself in terms of stable disposition and combine separate self-evaluation into psychological image of oneself. For example, you got a positive remark by your teacher and even your peers like you so much. They are always with you. Your parents always support you. They always appreciate you. So you will combine all these experiences. And what you will have is the high self-esteem. So I hope you understood that. The point to be noted. That the self-esteem has a strong relationship with the everyday behaviors. So if your parents, society always appreciates you, so you will have high self-esteem. So children with high self-esteem perform better in school as in comparison to children with low self-esteem. If we talk about the children who have high self-esteem, they will perform even better in social areas as in comparison to the children with low self-esteem. So the children with low self-esteem may display anxiety, depression and some antisocial behavior as well. So warm and positive parenting can help developing high self-esteem among children as to as let them know that they are accepted, they are competent and they are worthwhile. This will boost their self-esteem. So this is how self-esteem is built. Let's talk about the self-efficacy. Let's talk about self-efficacy. Self-efficacy differs in people. As it is the extent to which a person believes they themselves control the life outcomes or the outcomes are controlled by luck or fate or any situational factors. For example, passing an examination. As you are in examination, if you have prepared, so that means you are able to show the behavior required by the situation. 
in that situation you will be having a high self efficacy but if you are in a new situation where you have a surprise test so rather than showing uh, uh, the behavior like giving up if you will give it a try and say that yes i can do it these questions are related to the uh, method we have learned so that is also a high self efficacy a person who believes that he or she can display the abilities or behaviors required by the situation required by the new situation or any previously if you have uh, if we talk about the examination you have prepared for so that is even high self efficacy but a child sitting near you behaves like that he cannot try he gives up so that kind of behavior is learned by the family by the societies in which we grow up so it is said by the bandura social learning theory it is said that we uh, children and adults learn by imitating and observing the behaviors so if you are grown up in a society where your siblings and your parents even your other relationships shows a behavior where you cannot give up they they are hard working they they seem to be so much focused that whenever they are in any new situation they try to learn that new behavior they try to cope up with it whatever the situation demands they show that behavior so this is how you have to build a high self efficacy the society and parents play a vital role and even your positive experiences add up to your high self efficacy so this is how it, it is a point to be noted noted by parents that whenever your child doesn't need your assistance doesn't need your help don't always guide them let them be independent take let them take decisions you can correct them but let them first take decision let them be independent if they will be always dependent on you they will have they will show low self esteem as they will believe they are not worthy so let them believe that they are worthwhile they are competent now let's talk about self regulation it is the ability by which a person monitors and organize his behavior a person may uh, change his behavior according to the demands of the external environment so for example if we talk about the will power as situation pressures you but you respond with resistance or controlling or uh, by controlling ourselves that is the will power self control self control is learning to self control the needs the gratification of needs delaying the gratification of needs as for example it is it plays a key role in fulfillment of long term goals uh for example in indian culture we see uh, fasting in vrata that is self control so that helps in self regulation there are some techniques of self control let's talk about that so self control uh, technique number 1 is that observation of own behavior observing on behavior and then managing or modifying your behavior leads to enhancement or strengthen your self concept or when we talk about the self instruction instructing yourself to do or behave in a certain way as we have talked in self regulation it is mainly seen in self regulation self reinforcement so for example if we talk about 
that you are rewarding uh, rewarding yourself for a certain positive outcome as a uh, uh, you will go to watch a movie with your friends if you get good marks that is self reinforcement let's talk about culture and self so when we talk about the indian culture you can see in the diagram that individualistic and the group they both are related they doesn't have any separate boundaries they they are not a different identities they exist in a coexistence so that is why it is even said that they have a collectivistic nature let me explain in your general terms that in this your personal self and social self is mixed that if you think that your personal freedom is that you can go for a night out but your social self doesn't allow you so here the personal self and social self are not different identities they remain in a state of harmonious coexistence but when we talk about the western culture individual and group they are the different identities they have fixed boundaries self and other man and nature subjective objective so that is why we say that there is individualistic culture there is not a shifting in the boundaries as we have seen in Indi uh, indian culture so learners this was your concept of self we'll talk about personality in the next video and approaches to personality as well so learners keep learning stay home stay safe thank you learners